Greetings, 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 and welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. It's so good to be here with you, isn't it? Yes, today I have a beautiful background. I am showcasing our sound healing bowls in our center that we are soon going to have a sound bath. And this is the room that we do the workshops with the children, with the adults. Anyhow, so I just wanted to have a different colorful background since my throat is hurting just a tad. And if I sound hoarse, or please forgive me. Hello, whoever you are who is here, I can't see you. Anyhow, so if you are here live, by all means, uh, let me know, uh, say something or say, show me your hearts, your emojis, and please, uh, let's have a communication. Whatever I can do to communicate today, that would be great. Plus, um, for those of you who do not know me, uh, welcome. My name is Lisa Bubari. By trade, I'm a clinical hypnotherapist, stress management consultant, and I specialize in women's wellness, and yet I see everyone. Um, I am here at my healing center. We are in Glendale, and our mission, my tagline is Heal Within, where transformation begins. Because I truly believe healing it starts from the inside out just like happiness and joy joy is from the inside and happy is from from outside and happy is not permanent whereas joy it's like a will that it can fester and it's it's a ever uh fulfilling will so the joy is from inside. Anyhow, today we're going to be talking about something that has come up over and over with my clients, people who ask me on Facebook, the dialogues I get. I get a lot of messages. I get a lot of texts and emails. And I thank all of you for the communication. You know, so many choose not to communicate while I am right here live with you, but message me or email me afterwards. And, and that's okay. Uh, not everybody wants to share when uh, to see who else is there or to be seen. Um, hello. Hi. Hi, Hovanes. Um now, today we're going to be talking about um, habits and behaviors. You know, as a hypnotherapist, I work with anxiety. And I've always said, when our self-esteem is high, when we value ourselves, when we feel good about who we are, just like my uh, bracelet that says, my intent, it says, I matter. I share with my clients, our tagline is, you matter. Believing in I matter is huge. Knowing that you are worthy, knowing that you are deserving, knowing that you are deserving and wor worthy of so many good things in your life. It's not always for others that we have to do, but knowing that you deserve the education, the money, the home, the car, but most importantly, a good health, a sound mind, a loving heart, and all the good relationships and love, love and health and prosperity. Yes, you are deserving. So today's discussion is going to be about anxiety, feeling anxious about certain behaviors. And one of the behaviors we're going to be talking about is OCD. People make fun of um, when they say, oh, you know, you have OCD or you are such an obsessive person. 
and another person calls themselves, I'm such a perfectionist that I get into an anxiety because everything has to be perfect. Do you relate to this? I don't know, some people relate to being perfect. Even though they know there is no such thing as perfection, but they stress over making things and crossing every T in order to have everything just perfect, especially when it comes to uh, for their family members, their in-laws or friends, or even at work. So this thing of being perfect, which is non-existent, right? Is something that some have labeled it as OCD. Now, we know what OCD is. The term OCD has been termed as obsessive compulsive disorder. Obsessive, compulsive, and it's a disorder. Now, for someone who does things and they want it to be perfect, where is the disorder? Where is the compulsiveness in that? Because I believe it's truly in order. They do things in order. They check things over and over to make it right. And if it is a compulsive, um, obsessive, it has become obsessive. That's not how it started. In my line of work, years and years of doing hypnotherapy, tapping into the subconscious in order for us to find out, uh, reduce the anxiety. And then, yes, believe it or not, this OCD is first understanding where it stemmed from. And it's so easy to do this through hypnosis, tapping into your subconscious, because, you know, you can say all the affirmations you want consciously and consciously do things and say, this is what I'm going to do. And then within a few hours or days, you are back in doing the same thing. And then turn around and say, but I can't not do it. Well, there is no such thing as I can't, because I think I can't, the word I can't means I have not found the way to do any other way. Not that I cannot, unless there is something really wrong. That means we have not found the solution to do it a different way. We need help finding how we can do things differently that the circumstances, the result changes. So for those who have OCD outside of joking about it, I like to say, I, I am all about words. So I ask my clients, what if, just what if, I mean, it's like a huge what if we were to shift the word obsessive, compulsive disorder to orderly, controlled diversion. Orderly, controlled diversion. I want you to think about it because anything that is done as obsessive, it is very much in order. There are people who uh, lock something and then they go check the lock to see if the lock is locked. And there is an order for that. They check one thing and then they do something else and then they go back or check something like that. So there is a whole order that they have created. If they move something and they put things in order and they box things or number things, there's an order, even though it's a madness in their mind, but there is a whole order in there. It's controlled 
and it's in order. There is no disorder. But what is this is the diversion. We create OCD, we become compulsive. Because while we are doing this, we are not doing that one. And doing that is an emotional thing we want to divert from. So we begin doing this. And while we are busy locking, unlocking, counting, putting things in order, or even cleaning, cleansiness is another OCD. So people who shower two, three, four, five times thinking that they are dirty or they are smelling, it's not bad because while they're doing this, they are away from an emotional connection to something else. Now, do you relate to this? If you do, please emoji, um, thumbs up or anything. Hi, Ani. Hi, Mazgen. Hi, Lili. Hi, Karine. Hello, Gabby John. Hello to all of you for being here. Thank you for being present. I see you. I don't know if you relate to any of the things. And my voice is a little bit hoarse today, but I have no OCD in going and doing something. But I am drinking my tea. Mm. So good. Keeping my throat warm. And I do my meditation. Yesterday afternoon, I couldn't even speak. It was like there was this thing stuck in my throat. And this morning, I did my meditation. I did silent chanting. And by chanting and my meditation, I visualized whatever it was in here. I was taking it and literally releasing it. Anything that I was not aware and I needed to express, I was releasing it and saying to myself, I have the permission to speak. I have the permission to voice. I give myself permission to be clear in expressing what I want. You see, I do the same work on me as I help my clients every day in every way, accepting, appreciating, and honoring myself as much as I help all my clients do so. So back to OCD. I don't know what your OCD is or why you get anxious because of your OCD. I think you have developed your OCD long time ago and you can go back and literally sit with yourself and visualize what is it that you do. You can do this on your own and visualize exactly the steps that you take in doing so. It is counting, it is remembering, it is going back and checking locks, is it cleaning? Is it somebody's uh, name? Is it a song you repeat in your head over and over? It is a chant. I don't know. Everyone has their own. But I want you to know that there is nothing for you to be anxious about if it is affecting only you. But most people who come to me is because they're this habit of theirs is truly affecting others, especially loved ones, the ones that they live with or worked with, their colleagues, their children. Because of their own order that they had to create to feel good or to feel in control, unfortunately, it's spilling over. And they, because of theirs, they want to control other people or it's affecting them and making them be a part of their 
controlled environment. And that is not fair. Because whatever habit and behavior that we created are on our own for us, you see, all our behaviors are created by us for us, not someone else. I know for a fact, if we don't like someone or something, we find a way to protect ourselves or someone's behavior to protect ourselves. And we do something that feels comfortable and good at that very moment. And that every time there is that action, our reaction becomes to create something to protect or shield ourselves. While doing this, doing that, it's either a fear, anxiety, if whatever it is. And by doing that, it's no longer about them, but it's yours. So it was created for you, by you. Does this make sense? Ani, Ani writes, OCD is a very serious topic, which is being very much ignored, unfortunately. Thank you for addressing it. Yes, Ani John, it is a very serious topic, especially when it affects others. It's like driving a car. It is our car. We sit in our car. What we do in our car, as long as it's not moving, it is our compartment. It belongs to us. And if we are crying in there, laughing in our car, we are eating in our car, we are smoking in our car, we are singing in our car, whatever we do in our car, in our home, in our territory, that's fine. But once that we take this and we move it forward or shift it outside of our territory, and we take that car, we start driving the car. If we are angry, if we are smoking, or if we are texting, we are talking, we are whatever, that our full attention, it becomes outside of our territory. Now we are affecting other people. And it's the same thing with OCD. So hypnosis is so effective in peeling away the layers so that you can understand, this is why I do what I do and how it helps me. Even though you may think, oh my God, I wish I could just change this. In a way, it has been helping you. Well, it originally started by helping you. So it brought things in control and the disconnection was exactly what this was. You disconnected from the original thing that caused the hurt, the, uh, the, the pain, uh, the emotional connection that we did not want to feel. Now, once we tap into the subconscious and understand where it started from, that becomes so much easier. I'm not saying perfectly done, cured, but it becomes so much easier for the light bulb to go on and for us to have a better, better understanding, better control, and easily, gently shift it. For some, it happens just like this. They go, wow, I no longer need to do this. Done. What started when I was a child or a teenager or a baby or whatever, it no longer affects me today because that is not happening now. And yet I've been continually doing this and I like to call it because the foundation, the blueprint is still there. We changed the building, we moved everything, but the foundation of who we are comes with us, no matter 
you know, when we are feeling bad, no matter where we go, there we are. It's not about outside circumstances. It goes with us. So I want you to take a nice few moments. Sit back in silence. No music, no nothing. Just be quiet with yourself. And visualize the OCD, the order, the compulsiveness that you believe you have. And track back, if you can. All the answers are within you. And if you can tap into and allow that video of this is your life to play all the way back, that you can remember, recall when it started, and see if you can shift it. And if you cannot, by all means, call me. I'm here for you. In less than a few sessions, you may have your OCD gone or faded away or eliminated. I don't know. But the original emotion that attacked it or was the cause of it can be dismissed and no longer affect you. Making your life easier, making your life better, and spills over, making the life of the ones you live with, work with, much better. So today, I want you to think of it. Whatever it is that I put in order to control something, and that was a diversion. Today, I can roll it back, divert, have full control, and let the order out and be having fun. You know, you are a perfection with your imperfection. There is no perfection. My hair is not perfect. My mouth is not perfect. Um, definitely my voice today is not perfect. But you know what? It's not about my voice. It's about the message. It's not about all the things. Oh, let me play this for you. You know the sound healing bowl. It's the seven bowls the seven chakras. All my bowls have the chakra colors. Every one resonates with uh, an A, B, C, D, E, F, right? G. Hmm? So, A, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Su, La, Ti. Oh, don't sing. Okay. The highest note. so good to be in a sound bath which we are going to bring at our healing center if you are anywhere in the LA area the Glendale area please be watchful and look at 
um, my website, go on my website, which is healwithin.com and all my workshops and everything will be posted starting February. There's so much happening, you know, in two weeks, I'm celebrating my big birthday and I can't wait until February starts, but instead of waiting for February to start, I am starting today being excited, being excited and bringing all that energy of what is to come today. So I get the excitement right now instead of waiting then. You have the opportunity to live your life every single day knowing that you have joy within you that you can create excitement all that energy and goodness and love is within you and the palm of your hands so today i thank you for being here being present for all of you who were live right here right now and for those of you who are watching this on a repeat, I don't know, maybe on Facebook or YouTube, no matter where, you can just hashtag replay and you can hashtag YouTube, you can hashtag Facebook. I just want to communicate with you. By the way, I also ask you to subscribe below because it is with your communicating your interaction that Facebook, YouTube, everyone helps us deliver my message to so many. By all means, and if you like today's message and you believe someone needed to hear this, thank you for the testimonials, thank you for the emails and texts, but please share this, share this message with your friends, have them contact me. This is Lisa Bubari. A part of what we do is to help you heal within where transformation begins. God bless you. Thank you for being here. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Until then, God's blessings and may your, the universal light be with you. Bye-bye.